Hello, I'm Karen from TheNeedleFelter.com. Today we're going to make a chick. If you'd like to make your own chick, I created a free downloadable PDF pattern. There's a link to that in the description below. We'll start by creating the armature for the chick. Your armature will end up looking like this. I'm using 22 gauge copper wire, but you could use any 22 gauge craft wire. I've already cut four 15 inch pieces of wire. This will be what we'll use for the body and feet. I've also cut two four and a half inch pieces of wire. These will be for the chick's wings. To get started, I'll line up the length of the 15 inch wires, find the center, fold it in the center, and I'm just going to start twisting. And I'm going to twist down about two and five eighths inches. Then what I'm going to do next is create the leg. So I'm going to split into two sections of wire here and twist these. I'm going to go down about two and a half inches this time. So just a little bit less. and do that on both sides. So now you should have something that looks like this. So I want to place a bend a quarter inch out from the spine on either side to create the chick's hips and do that on both sides. And that will be my chick chick's hips. And then what I want to mark then is three quarters of an inch for this bend, three quarters of an inch for this bend, and three quarters of an inch for where the chick's uh, foot starts. So once you get your three quarter inch bends in, you can kind of straighten out the feet to about where they will sit. But before we cut the feet, let's go ahead and bend the spine and the head. So I'm going to measure that down and the first thing I'm going to do is just bend the whole thing up. So that's about an inch and an eighth. So there I want to just bend straight up. So it looks like that. And then I want to bend about a half an inch of that forward so that your neck should then be about 5 eighths of an inch. Align the curve of your spine with the drawing, so it should look something like this. And then we'll do the feet. You want three wires facing forward and one wire facing back. So move one of your wires forward on each foot. Then you can use the drawing to trim the wires so place each foot on the pattern, and then I can just trim them according to the pattern. I, I like to leave just a little extra, just in case. So I'm gonna trim them just past the edge of the drawing. So there's one, two, three. As you can see now they match pretty well. And then I just need to do that back one. and then you have a foot. So I'll go ahead and do the second one. And now you have your feet. Just so they're not sharp, I like to take a little metal file and just kind of file the ends off or you could use a little sandpaper, but just, just to take that any sharp tips off. And then there will be two separate pieces, one for each wing. We'll fold those in half. I'm going to twist these about one and three quarter inches. Kind of straighten those out and then we're just going to bend these to match the wing pattern. 
So I'm going to start that first bend is about a quarter of an inch. It's about right there. Bend that up. And then you want to put your second bend in about five eighths of an inch. All right. And that's your wing. So let's start wrapping the armature with core wool. Okay, I'm going to grab probably a, about a six or seven inch strip. I've got some smaller strips already torn off. And what I like to do is get the armature covered. So I don't want to go past about, let me show you, past about the middle of this part of the leg with the core wool because that will have the merino top over it. That'll be kind of an orange color. I'm just using white glue. And I'm going to pull off thin strips of the core wool. I just, for this first coat, I think it's just easier to add a little bit of glue. Not a lot, but just a little to help keep that core wool from slipping. And I'm just going to continue kind of gluing and wrapping. And I think that's good. There's your first layer of core wool. So the first thing to do when you get to this stage is to look at references. The things you want to look at are the shapes that make up the chick. So what I noticed after I was looking at reference photos was that this wire that I have bent forward for the head is not going to work. So I'm just going to bend that down. You can use your pliers, just bend that forward and then kind of just push it down a little bit so that it's more like that. And then one more thing just to make it easier to wrap the core wall is I would take these three toes and just lightly bend them in a little bit. It'll just make it less likely that you'll catch the core wool on the feet. And then I want to position these two back joints so that they're about five eighths of an inch apart. I'm sorry, seven eighths of an inch apart. And try to get those two. Well, that looks pretty good. That's, that's pretty close. And now we're ready to add more core wool. So I'm going to start with a piece about, I think this is about seven, eight inches long and just kind of pull off small pieces. And the first thing I'm going to do is wrap the sort of upper legs and thighs. And again, just like when we were wrapping before, I think it's easier to cut or to tear off shorter pieces. And then what I like to do to try to keep it symmetrical is whatever I do to one side, I'll just go ahead and do to the other side so that I'm kind of building them up simultaneously versus doing one and then the other. And now I'm going to put another piece, kind of do the same thing, build them up just a little bit more. So now you should have something like that. And I'm going to add just a little bit more here because we want to start to get this shape with the shape of that thigh. So we've kind of added this part up in here, which will mostly get absorbed into the body. But now we want a nice chunky little thigh there. And I don't want to come all the way down because this will be um, orange wool here. So I want to come down to about right there. All right, so you should end up with something that looks about like that. And I'm gonna just check that I didn't move my 
back my legs together and I did a little bit so let's move that back out so next I'm gonna make a pad to go right in between the legs and I'm gonna start with this so it's about this thick unfelted so it's about, about a little under two inches and I'm gonna use a coarse needle and just kind of felt that a little bit. We won't want this to be really wide because it's it's going to go right in between the legs and start to create um, the little chicken butt like that. But I want to keep the edges a little bit feathered just so that I can blend it in nicely. So now I'm going to put the thickest part toward the back Again, try not to push these legs out more than I already have them. I'm going to spread that out a little bit and balance him on the side of the mat so I'm not bending the legs too much and just start kind of felting that in. All right, so now we've got kind of a start there. And now I'm going to make a second piece that's a little bit longer and we'll do the same thing. We'll make a layer that'll come up even a little further because now we're going to start kind of pushing this but out a little bit and building the chest. So this time I'm gonna make another piece, uh, probably also about two inches, maybe. It's a little bit longer than that first one, but it's gonna be thinner where it goes under here, thinner there and thicker in the front. And I'm gonna add a little bit more because I want it to be quite, quite thick in the front. And then, like I said, keep this end a little bit thinner and then try to uh, consolidate most of the wool here in the front. Okay, now we wanna kind of, without getting caught on the feet, kind of back that into place. And you wanna make sure that it's not, I wanna keep it lower than the joints there on the leg, so it'll end up being something about like that. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna use the medium needle to help felt that in place. And then kind of compressing it around each side of the leg. And then here, we're gonna start creating this shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and felt this down. I'm not felting it to the leg, I'm felting it kind of right behind the legs and into the spine, the sides of the spine. And then I'm gonna take, I think maybe the coarser needle work better to start kind of consolidating this. It's Cause we want this to be a pretty firm piece. That looks pretty good. My body still feels pretty centered between the legs and the spine. So we can go ahead and add a little wool on the head. So I'm gonna take a small piece and just start wrapping it Kind of just start wrapping it around the head. So now we're starting to get the head in place. Take a little bit of wool and almost make like a little shower cap to go on top of the head. Doesn't take a whole lot on something this small. But I just rip up some core wool and then make a little circle, keep the ed edges all feathery. Go on the other side too. And you really want to consolidate the wool in the center. So I'm just, just felting around in a little circle. And then I can take that and just kind of put it on the head like a little shower cap. 
and then felt that in place and that'll help build up the height that we need for that little head and now it's starting to look more like a chick so I want to get about a one inch wide strip roughly and I'm gonna wrap that around just around the body and I want to I want to keep it from creeping up past this kind of edge of their chest so I'm just going to try to keep the wool in this area and just fatten up that body a little bit. And I don't want to build up too much on top of this spine, so I'm kind of felting on either side of the spine. That also helps you if you're working around a wire, if you know there's a wire there. Um, just kind of felt on either side of it. And I need him to be a little wider. And I'm checking to make sure that I'm not getting it too thick, especially around the head. I want to maintain this curve here. See how that's looking. You want to keep moving him so that you're felting him even because you want it to look somewhat symmetrical. It looks good now, so I can just kind of felt it all over just to firm it up. And you can just check it from different angles to make sure that it's symmetrical. Now what I'm going to do is I need to build up the top of the head just a little bit. So I'm going to create another little shower cap to add some height. Not too much, but I really want a nice firm head so that we can attach the eyes and beak to it. And kind of get that centered on the head. And then felt that in. And that'll also help thicken up the head a little bit. And then now I've got the height pretty good, but I need to increase just the width of the head. So I'm going to take thin strip and just wrap around the head. Again, trying to keep in mind where that neck is so I don't get too thick in here. And again, just check that it's symmetrical. I'm going to felt it a little bit there. I think that looks good. So the next thing I want to do is work on extending the leg a little forward here. So I'm going to create a piece to add to add right in here so that I can bring this this thigh a little forward. So pull off a little bit for each side. Okay, that looks good. And then I'm just going to felt little tiny circles and try to compress that wool in before I attach it. So now this, what I'm trying to do is build up this area so I can check and see about how far that needs to come up. So it needs to come up about right here. So I can sort of lay that in and crunch it up a bit. I don't want to get this thicker. I, I'm really trying to just get the front of the leg thicker. this little bit on the side down and check them from different angles so chicks have kind of a really round fluffy little butt so what I'm going to do is go is take this thin strip and wrap it around in a circle so I'm going to anchor it a little bit with my needle 
and then just wrap in a circle, keeping it between the legs and trying to keep it even. And just go around a couple of times. And that gives me a nice chunk of wool now that I can shape. They do have quite a slope to their back, so I wanna make sure I'm sloping this down, but not too far out. Again, just checking that we're staying symmetrical. Now I want to put a strip across the back of the butt. I want this to be a little bit thinner and keep this fluffy area on the sides. So I'm trying to build up kind of the sides of the chick's body now. And then I want to just add a little bit of bulk on each side, so I'm kind of scrunching that wool up. If that helps to show it, maybe. You can see just kind of scrunching that wool up to add some bulk on each side. Okay, it's looking pretty good, getting that sort of chick shape. Okay, so now I want to build up each side of the thigh. So I want to make a nice round, round pad. All right, so I want to add these in this area of the thigh. So this is kind of what I'm going for, is just adding some bulk onto the thigh, side of each thigh. It's looking good, looks looks better, it's getting a little wider. And you do want to just make a check that your legs are still the right distance apart. These look good. Okay, so next I'm going to add create the little tail, so we'll make a triangle for that. And I also the back is looking a little bit flat, needs a little more curve. So when I add the tail, I'm gonna to try to also add a little bit of padding in this section of the back. So to make the tail, I'm just gonna create a triangle. I don't want it too long because like I said, I want it kind of going up just part of the back. I'm gonna use my clover pen. I like the clover pen with the two, um, two needles. It just helps to create a straight line. And I'm, I wanna keep kind of the grain of the core wool going vertically to the triangle. So I'm gonna kind of start my triangle and their, their tails are a little wider than you might think. So I want kind of a wide triangle. So I've got something that looks like that, and we'll just find the position of it. I think about there looks good. And then I wanna concentrate this extra wool up into the back to try to make that back just a little more curved. I might need to add a little more there, but we'll see if we can get that silhouette looking a little better.
think I'm still going to need a little more wool there, so I'm going to go ahead and add some, some bits. Needs it about right there. Okay, so that's looking good now. Looks pretty symmetrical, and we've got a nice curve to the back. So now I just want to add a little bit of padding on either side of the tail just to kind of make the little hips or butt area a little bit wider. And then we're going to add these just on either side of the hip here. It's going to also start kind of fleshing up this. You can see there's a little bit of a flat area right here. That's what I want to use this to add a little bit of a curve to. So just behind the tail and kind of in front of the uh, back of the thigh or, or just kind of going about halfway into the top of the thigh. Okay, now one thing I want to check is that I haven't lost the distance between the legs, so that should be about seven eighths, and it still is, so that's good. The armature stayed put. And um, I think the only thing we have left is this chest needs to be just a little bit wider right here in the front, just almost like there's a, a deep collar here. So I'm going to do some similar to what we did in the back, just add two little pieces of little pads of wool on either side to kind of flesh out that chest a little bit. And there's our nice plump little chick. Looks symmetrical from different angles as I'm looking at him. He's nice and firm. And we're ready for the next step. I grabbed my little tiny ball head pins and I'm using these to mark the tip of the beak and the two eyes. So I'm using some sort of light peach or apricot colored merino and I'm going to pull off a bit of it and kind of cut it up a little bit and just grab some scissors for that into about one inch long pieces and I'm just going to stack those I'll start with a little bit of that and I'm going to make a small bottom beak just this little little bottom part I'm just going to felt this a little bit then I want to draw a triangle like that fold the edges over on both sides and I want to keep it kind of wide Pull some of this extra length. I don't need it to be really long so I can just kind of pull that off and stick it back in to help thicken up the base of the beak a little bit. And what this will do is this will sort of form a little cup like that and that'll be that'll be the bottom of the beak just like that so that'll go almost right around that pin. I'm wondering if this is actually a better top beak than a bottom beak because this looks pretty thick. Yeah, I think we'll use this for the top. We can just build this up a little bit more and then make a smaller bottom beak. 
So I want to thicken this a little bit so that it's a little, I guess it would be deeper. I'm trying to build this, build this part, this part thicker and keep the edges thinner. That's looking pretty good. That would go on about there. So let's go ahead and make the bottom beak. And this time I will make it smaller. <laughs> okay, so now I have a small bottom beak. I'm going to go ahead and felt that a little bit more. And then we can kind of cup that. So it's something like that and that will fit under this one and go on something like that. <laughs> now for positioning it, I like to draw a plus sign And then I'll place the small beak on first. About like that looks good. And we'll go ahead and Put that top one over that and it'll extend a little bit. So I always just tack it first just to make sure that I've got it in the right position. And once you have your beak all secured, you go back and touch it up a little bit. We'll add a little bit of dark wool there to emphasize that um, mouth line. But let's go ahead and get the eyes in first, just in case we want to move anything around once we have the eyes in. So the first thing I want to do is create a little bit of a divot around the eye. So I pull the pin out and just sort of felt right around that pin just to make a little bit of a divot for the beads. I'm going to use a, a black bead for each eye. So I have two six millimeter black beads. These are black onyx and a sewing needle and then black thread. You wanna make sure that your sewing needle will go through the beads, the hole in the beads. So just make sure that you, not only will it fit, but you've got a little bit of play because remember you'll have thread on the end there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get some thread. Thread my needle. I like to start it at the back of the head uh, and come out through the first eye just because then I tie it off that way. So what I want to do is try to have my needle come out exactly where I have that pin. So it's right there. I'm going to put my bead on it. And then I'm going to go right back down through that same hole again. Not the same hole, but close to it. You don't want it to pull out. And I'm going to go back through the head. And once you get both eyes in, you want to kind of pull them tight so that they're in there nice and tight. And then go back out back of the head. And you can tie a knot. And then just to finish it off, I like to put a little bit of wool, little core wool over the 
tail end of the thread so it doesn't end up popping through your top coat. And then go ahead and check your placement of your beak. Now I want to just emphasize the nostrils a little bit. So you can just put a mark around where you want each nostril, kind of. It's almost toward the bottom of the eyes, so maybe a little bit here, a little bit. And I'm going to use my coarse needle to kind of make that just a little bit more of a divot there on either side. That looks pretty good. And then just check that it's that your beak is kind of in between your two eyes, that everything's lining up the way you'd like it to. And we'll go ahead and do a little more work around the eyes. So I'm going to add a little bit of black around each eye, just a tiny rope, just in case any of the white coral wool shows through. And then I'm going to add a little um, bit of gray also. And then I want to take some thin wisps of gray. And this is just gray merino top. And I like to twist them into a little bit of a rope. And then just take this all around both eyes and this, this will sort of be the eyelids. You just want to get it covered so that it looks kind of like an eyelid. Some of this will get covered up with the top coat, so don't worry about it if it looks too wide or too big. We just want to get that area filled in a little bit, and you don't want to see the holes in the beads. That's one of the most important parts. I've covered both eyes with a little bit of gray to kind of give them an eyelid. And the last thing I want to do is just take a little bit of this um, super fine bat in beaver and I want a very thin line. This might even be too thick. We'll see how it looks. Um, I'm just going to put just a little thin line of that right along the beak. Okay, now we've got eyelids around both eyes. We've got a little bit of definition on the beak and uh, we're ready to start working on the legs and the feet. The first thing I wanna do with these is go ahead and reopen those toes. Spread those toes out again. Make sure that back toe is lined up with the front toe. You might wanna use your pliers to help get those all lined up. So I have some glue, I have some orange merino top, and I'm going to pull off a thin, thin strip of it. And I start by wrapping a little bit around the ankle, a little bit of glue. But I want to go almost to the tip and then back because I want to leave a little bit of wire at the end for the toenails. I feel like that toe is too thin. I'm going to wrap that same area again. And then the next one I'll do a little thicker. That looks better. And let's get that anchored. And I want to do the big long toe, so I'm going to put some glue on that. OK, 
Okay, so I'm going to start at the top. And in this case, I can kind of felt it to the core wool a little bit. Just anchor it. And then just wrap down a little, kind of keep it thin because you're going to come back over it one more time. So I'm going down to about where that ankle is. And then I'm going right back up. And that looks good. Now I just have to do the other sides. All right, so I've got both feet now. I wrap the toes and up the legs and kind of around that bend. And what I want to do now, just to secure everything, is I'm going to paint a mixture of white glue. That Elmer, in my case, I just used Elmer's glue and water. So I mixed 50% glue, 50% water. And I'm just going to apply that to with a paintbrush just to the legs and the toes. And I'm not going to really oversaturate them, just, just enough to soak in. And you want to try to paint it on in the direction that the wool is wrapped. We've got it covered and if you got too much you can kind of just squeeze it out a little bit with your fingers and then you can just wipe it on paper towel if you want to sort of blot it a little bit we'll let those feet dry and then we're ready to start the next step the legs and feet are dry now I went over them with just a pair of tiny scissors to clean up any loose ends now we're ready to start adding the yellow top coat. First thing I do is look at reference photos again. This is a photo from Pixabay and the link is in the description below. But I wanted to take a look at the area around the eye especially. So what I'll do is draw those shapes in with an air erase marker. These are the lines that I drew. I want to make sure I put the yellow outline around the beak shape so that I kind of emphasize the nostrils and the bill. I'll be filling in some yellow behind each eye and a little bit underneath the beak. So the top coat I'm using is a collaboration between Sarah Renzulli from Serafina Fiber Art and DHG, um, which is Dying House Gallery. So this is a yellow with some silk. It's, it's very soft and lustrous. And I'm going to start by just pulling off some little bits of this and blending it just a little. I may tear it a bit to make it smaller, but I'll just use some fine pieces like this to go ahead and just start filling in the lines that I've drawn. All right, so here I've finished just adding a layer of the yellow duck fluff onto the chick's face. Now what we want to do is start making it actually fluffy. And what I like to do is kind of think through a little bit of a strategy of how I'm going to approach covering the bird. When I'm doing the bottom, so if I'm I'm applying some wool here and felting here. I'll need to hold the back and the head. So I like to do this part first because once I do, especially the head, because that'll have the most detailed work in it, I don't want to touch that or handle it too much after I complete it. So I'm going to do the belly and kind of the back of the tail first, then do the head. Then once I get the head in, I'll do the chest. Then I like to do around the legs and almost build up almost like a little skirt around the bottom of the chick. And then go in and fill in the thighs, the rest of the butt, and finally I do the back. I do like to trim along the way as I go. I do that to make sure that I'm getting kind of the, the silhouette and the shapes within the chick correct. The other thing I should mention is I'm going to pull off chunks of wool like this and they will be super long. If I just try to attach the fur like this or the fluff like this, I'll end up with a lot of waste. So I like to just kind of pull it off and then I'm going to, in this case, 
cut it in half and then you can restack it a little bit. And I'll be using two techniques for adding the wool. So the first one would be just a regular, I'll use this piece for that, a little bit of a, just a regular fur technique when you're applying the fluff. So in that case, you just, I'll, I'll kind of demonstrate it here. What I think of as a fur technique is just taking the wool, laying it on the animal and just kind of felting it down the center. I'm not gonna felt it as well as I would if it was actually on the chick. And then I'll fold it over, felt it a little bit this way, and then fold it and felt it a little bit this way. And that gets it pretty, pretty stuck on there pretty well, especially if you do it a little more, spend a little more time felting it than I did here, because I'm gonna pull this out. What I'll do for the body is more of a shingling technique. And I learned this, I should say, from Sarah Renzulli from Serafina Fiber Art. But the way she explains shingling is you think of this length of wool in thirds. So you would, about a third would be your fluff. I'd go ahead and and felt about, I, I she says a third, I think it's a little less. <laughs> and then I would fold that over and felt it this way. And that gives you a little bit more of a kind of fluffy, thinner look where the this fur technique is going to end up being much thicker. For a chick, we probably want more of a fluffier look than a really thick look. So um, I'm gonna use both, but probably mostly the shingle technique. And the other thing I wanted to mention was just to be patient when you're doing the fluff part. It's just one of those things that I accept. It's part of the process and it's worth spending the time on because it's sort of your final layer. And really, if it's, if you, Take your time and do it well it makes a world of difference in how your finished piece looks so i'm going to go ahead and get started and i'll i'll uh show do some progress shots along the way i'm not going to record doing the whole thing in this case because it would be a really long video and this video is already getting long um, but i'll show you progress shots so the first thing i'm doing is just creating a pile of fluff so just pulling off some of these longer staples cutting it in half and restacking it um, that way I don't have to worry about doing that as I go. I like to just have a, a bunch of it ready. So I'm going to start kind of putting this fluff on the belly. Since I plan on shingling, I'm going to start kind of in the back and then work forward. So I can hang the little head off the edge of the wool buddy. Lay some of this fluff down and I'm going to I, even though I'm going to shingle, I want to do kind of a line sort of down the middle and then out a bit. And then pull that, that over. And that's my first bit attached. So I'm going to then try to line up my next section of wool with that, that edge of the last section and let it overlap a little bit. And then do, it's not quite a third for me. I, I don't, I think I want it a little fluffier than if it would be thirds. Thirds might be a little bit too sparse for a chick, but it would depend on how much wool you're using. And then I'm gonna fold it down again. And get that felted in. You can see now you're starting to get get some nice fluffy looking chick fluff. By the time that you trim that, I think it'll look look pretty good.
I'm not going to put any on the legs yet. But what you can do then, just to get a feel for, you know, how long is it, how thick or thin is it, is kind of look at the drawing or the pattern. And you can see I'm way too long. So what I'm going to do is trim some of this off. I am going to want this joint to show on the chick. So what you can do is kind of just figure out about how long it needs to be so that it's not looking too long, but it's also not too short. I think at this point I would err on the side of it being a little bit too long because you can always trim it. If you get too short right now, then you're going to have to add more. It won't. I'm not going to have it hanging straight down like this. You could, but I'm, I'm going to kind of brush it a little bit. I like to use, I like to use my awl for that to kind of comb it a little bit where you want it and I've got kind of a line there so you can trim that up a bit just to try to make it look a little more a little less extreme if you're getting harsh lines but that's a pretty good start so I'm gonna go ahead and fill up this area a little bit more into the chest and a little bit more up the back and then I'll start working on the head. Okay, so I've filled in under the belly and up the tail a little bit. And what I'm trying to do as I'm trimming is to pay attention to the line of the chick. So in this case, you can see it kind of indents here and then the tail or the butt area is, is longer and fluffier so I'm kind of doing that with the line as I'm as I'm trimming the fluff and this I'll still probably make it a little bit shorter but I just want to kind of get an idea of what parts are longer or shorter and where I might need to add a little more thickness so right here I can see I've got a little bit of a break there between those two since this needs to be pretty fluffy to do to make a nice fluffy butt so I think uh, one of the ways to fix that is to take a small amount of wool you don't need too much when you're going back in maybe a little bit more than that and I'll go ahead and just um, add a row in there not shingled but just kind of using that fur technique And then I'm going to make sure that's nice and attached. And then flip it forward. I just like to, just for my own, um, I guess, security, that I've really got it well attached. I like to felt it a little bit underneath and then fold it down and felt it on the top a little bit too just to make sure that that's really in there solidly and won't easily pull out you could pull it out if you tried really hard but you can see that's the longer bit now and then what you can do is kind of tease that into shape a little and I'm thinking that's still going to be part of this shorter bit, so I'll go ahead and and trim that a little shorter. And pull out any strays. And then I think I'll kind of try to get a little bit of a gra gradual line there into that fluffier it and we'll clean that up at the end but I like I said I like to just sort of almost like block out the shapes as I'm going and now that now you don't see we had that break there before and now because I added that that other line in it's filled in filled in a little better and the same thing here because we're doing shingling um, as I get under the tail here, I'm just going to want to do a row of kind of planting 
if you want to call it that, or just that fur technique where I just go ahead and put in a row or maybe even two under the tail to make that nice and fluffy because they do have kind of a tight fluffy butt. But for now, this is far enough because I, I don't want to do that yet because I'm going to be handling this as I'm working on the head. All right, so for the head, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of do that fur technique. If you look at the photos again of the chick, they do have a little bit of kind of yellow skin showing around the eye, almost in a little bit of a teardrop shape to get all this detail in around the eye, around the beak, under the beak. I'm just going to use that fur technique and um, this will get trimmed pretty short. So it's, I want to keep it maybe a little bit thicker because it will be trimmed short. Oh, the other thing to keep, uh, to maybe keep track of, I don't have it in the sketch, but if you look at photos of the chicks, their heads kind of go, they kind of flatten out a little bit. So they're not, it won't be completely round like this as you're trimming it, if that makes sense. Um, you want it to be kind of a little flatter. It kind of goes, let me see if I can, maybe I can draw it. So instead of the, the wool being round like this, so say this is the core wool, this is my core wool of the head. It's kind of round like that, but the, the actual fluff will kind of come up this way and kind of angle a little bit like that. Kind of angles out and down a little bit, if that makes sense. So this will all be, all be fluff that you trim. So as you're trimming it, don't trim it too tight here because you do want it to kind of angle out a little bit on the back. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on the head. I've got the head covered now with the duck fluff. I, the way I approached the head was I attached the wool around the eye first in a circle and then I attached it around the beak and I did it using very small sections. So I would pull off maybe maybe this much wool, fold it in half and felt it on with a uh, medium needle. I couldn't think for a second. And that's the way I worked that part of it. You can see it's coming along nicely. I've been trimming it as I go. This isn't necessarily the final trim. I may cut it a little bit more. Um, I don't want to over trim it yet until I get um, more of the duck fluff on the rest of the body. And then I use my awl a lot just to kind of help me comb the wool, if you will, and position it. And then to help me shape it, I have a little bit of a, a little mascara um, comb brush thingy. And that helps especially to get out those little trimmed sections as you're trimming. The other tip I would give you as you're doing this is to work slowly. You don't have to rush. So I'll put in a row. I'll kind of trim it roughly to where I think it's going to be. I did go in and needle felt around the eyes. I trimmed this. I did add some a little bit of fluff around the eyes and then I would kind of um, felt it back just a little bit to kind of just make it look a little more realistic. And then the thing that I think gives them even a little bit more realism is if you can felt this line right above the beak, not always, but a lot, but some of the time you'll see chicks have a little bit of a kind of indentation there. So I go ahead and, and felt that. It's not too far, but it's just one more little bit of realism. So next I'm going to do the chest and for that, the chest is pretty easy. You just want to go across with horizontal lines. It doesn't need to be as thick as the head. The head, the head for me at least, I like a nice thick head. So I did, there's quite a bit of wool in here, but I think it really helps um, it look more realistic where the rest of the body um, doesn't need to be as, as, uh, as tight, if you will. It, the, the wool doesn't have to be as dense. So for the chest, I'll start approaching it more like I did under the body, where I'll probably do um, some shingling versus just the tight planting of fur. Now, if you're worried, um, because one of the reasons I wanted to do the head is now you shouldn't need to touch the head as much. You probably may hold it a little bit, um, but I try not to touch it as much as possible. 
Um, a way to protect all the work that you did is you can put a piece of saran wrap around it. Um, I call it saran wrap. I don't. Sometimes it's glad wrap, but just the sort of kitchen um, food wrap. Okay, so I have a piece of saran wrap that's it's a little bigger than I need, but because I'm going to um, trying to I try to reuse it. I don't want to cut it too much. And what I'm going to do is sort of start in the back and wrap around his head and maybe go up and over this way to make almost like a little case for his head and I'm just gonna pin it with these short pins in a few places So I'm going to get started on the chest and what I'm going to do is I like to start from the bottom and work up. So what I'll, I'll do, another trick I'll do sometimes is I will go ahead and sort of start my felting a little bit. On the pad and then I'll kind of lay that across about where I want it to go. This is curving up now, up forward. So I'm going to trim it. Kind of following that curve a little bit, but leaving myself some room to play so that as I do my final trimming, I can do the, um, really shape it. It's a little crooked. I've got a little longer on one side than the other. And that's as much as I would do. So I'm going to go ahead and go all the way up and continue as I'm moving up the chest I'm going to continue going out wider because the chest gets a little wider. So I'll do a row about here because now I'm kind of running into the top of the legs. We'll do I'll move the plastic back a little bit do a row kind of there so you can see they get longer and go around a little further and do one here and then I'll probably do one right under here so that it um, covers now this one because there is wool well no actually I will need it there is wool trimmed short there so I do definitely need that row there too so one, two, three, four more rows here to finish the chest. So I felt it in about halfway up the chest and while the wool looks great, um, it is a little bit, it's laying a little flatter than I would like. You can see really need it to puff out to get that nice edge there. And I could just kind of fluff it out with my awl and hope for the best. But the problem is that if it's handled, that will just, you know, flatten right back down. So what you can do in this case, if you run into that, is I'm going to look for a place where there's kind of a break in the wool. And I'm going to add a little bit more in there to try to puff that up. And then I will also um, kind of use, There's you can see there's a space in there that's... I can kind of open up a bit and then and I'm gonna take a it, it doesn't take a really really thick section of wool you don't want to get it too thick where it's actually 
turns into this looking like big chunks are in there because then you'll that'll be a different problem to fix but what I want to do is kind of get a nice um, a nice layer of wool and just kind of restacking it a little bit to spread it out and let me see if how wide that is it's not too wide because I'll probably just put it right in here so this is probably a little too much I'm gonna put some of that back and then distribute this a little more evenly and what I can do is just go ahead and add this in And now, because I'm adding more, instead of shingling it, I'm going to just sort of use that planting technique where you just felt it down right in the middle. Get it in there nice and secure. And then I want to flip that part up. I'm gonna felt this side a little bit. That also helps push it kind of straighter out. And then I'm gonna flip it down. And do the same thing on the top. Just be careful where you, sometimes if you're doing this say around the neck, you might actually poke through. So just be cautious of where your hands are. Right now my hand is in the back so I don't have to worry about the needle going all the way through. Just wanted to mention that because I've done that before. <laughs> Poked my hand. Okay. Now I've got this added in. And you can see it's already helping this to be a little bit, to stand up a little bit more. And then it's easy to trim. What I like to do when I'm trimming is kind of just pull it out either in line with the uh, level you have right of wool, the length of wool that you have below it and, and on top of it. And then you can just kind of remove that so I don't get it on there. Kind of just trim along that line. And Look and see if you have anything that's way too long. I always err on the side of cutting it a little bit longer. I know if you've done needle felting for a while, you're, you're used to that. Because you can always fix too long. You can fix too short too, but it's just a little harder. All right, and now I'm much happier with that. So what I think I'll do is I was doing shingling. I think just because I want this chest nice and puffy, I'm going to go ahead and just plant wool for these last, probably, I'll probably do uh, three rows. So one here, it'll probably look, I'll show you something like this. So do one here, one about here, and then I want one right up against the neck. So three rows of wool that's just planted, not shingled. But where it shingled down here, that worked perfectly. perfectly because I don't need it. I don't need it as thick and I actually, I don't want it standing straight out. I want it to kind of, you know, be brushed back a little bit because that's going under the body and that's the way that the, the fluff would, would fall there. This will have to be cut shorter, but like I said, we'll, we'll keep it a little longer for a while until we get it all in and then we'll trim it to shape. Okay, so I finished planting the wool up to the head and I've also done a lot of trimming now to start um, getting the shape of the chest. And then I filled in a little bit around the legs to start establishing where the uh, length of the fluff should be there. I did take the plastic off of the head just to help me get a feel for where the wool would um, blend from the head into the chest. And what I wanted to pay attention to as I was trimming was kind of establishing this chest shape. You can see I kind of have that here. And then also this shape around the legs. 
kind of keep that rounded and then remember this is going to fluff up more to start creating this tail. So one tip with the trimming is as you're cutting the wool, I try to cut it kind of at an angle. So instead of just trimming straight across like this, I would trim it either kind of at this angle or, or here you can see I've got a little bit of a line there, kind of a hard line there that I probably, you can, sometimes you can just break that up with your awl. But if you did want to trim that, trim a little bit of that, I would take my scissors and trim kind of at the angle of the body so I'm not, so you get kind of like a, um, looks more like a feathered edge instead of a hard edge that way. I just find that that helps you get a more natural look. So next what I need to do is I'm going to go ahead and cover the rest of the body and then trim it all up. One, one thing to that I need to pay attention to is that this curve of the back, because right now my back is kind of straight. So like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and cover the rest of the body, paying attention to the line of the back, the line of this little tail, and um, just trying to keep everything else in proportion and in the correct shapes. I finished covering my chick. It's a little flat in a few spots because I've been handling it, but you can easily kind of give them some volume again just by going in with an awl or a toothpick or a skewer or something like that just to plump them back up. But before we do that final fluffing, what I want to do now is add the wing. So I have one wing made. I made the wing for the, I guess it would be his right side. So the right side one is done, but I need to make the one for the left side. So I wanna make that the opposite shape. And they, they're gonna go kind of like that, fit like that. Um, so what I wanna do first is just cover it with wool. So I'm gonna get a little bit of, just a thin strand of wool and we're just gonna wrap it and I'll use a little glue, just like we did when we were doing the feet. I'm not, I'm probably going to cut this. I think I cut this wire a little bit because it was a little long. So I want to wrap it to about right there. So I won't put the glue any further than that. And I don't need a lot, just enough to kind of hold it. Get that out of the way. And then I'm just gonna wrap the whole thing. And then I can felt it a little bit, just with a medium needle, just being aware of the wire. Okay, and then I want to build it up just a little bit, and I did build it out a little bit this way, so I want it, but I want to keep it flat. You can see it's still very flat. So what I'll do is kind of tear off another strip of wool. I'm not sure if we'll need this much, but I'm going to wrap it, but kind of keep it wide and loose like that almost like so you can see I want to get it about the width that I want it to be but keep it keep it loose and I'm going to felt that Wrap it in a little tighter to try and get sort of a triangular shape. And then we'll just add a little bit of this sort of, a little bit of feathering by just wrapping some loose wool over that and felting it. It's pretty simple. See how that's looking. So yeah, the other thing to remember is um, which way the wing goes. 
So this one's going this way. So this one will go like that. So they're mirrors of each other. Okay, once you get it felted about where you'd like it, then you can trim that tip if there's too many flyaways there. I don't mind it being a little fuzzy because the whole chick is. And then what I want to do is just add some sort of feathery bits of wool coming off the end of the wing. So I'll want those longer in the front than they are necessarily in the back. They don't need, this doesn't need to be real thick or real long, just, just enough to kind of give you a little bit of a wing feel. Just make sure it's firmly tacked in there and won't come off. That looks pretty good. And then I can trim that up a little bit. All right, and then this one, the wire is just a little bit too long, so I'm gonna trim the wires so they're about the same amount. You don't need it to go too far into the body. So I've cut off just a little bit there. And now I've got my two wings rid of this extra wool. Before I put them in, I'm going to try to figure out where I want them to go. And if you look on the picture, they're up pretty forward. They're really kind of almost underneath the eye. So if you look underneath the eye, that would be about right in here. And they're pretty high up also, so you can kind of get that line there and then follow the line here which is kind of just below the beak so i want the wing to go kind of right in here so kind of right about in here and i'll poke a hole being careful not to hit the wire that's in there and also not to go through and hit your finger and you can almost poke straight through to the other side if you want to line up where your other wing will be Maybe, um, I think what I might do is stick a pin in there. That way I can have a pin marking the other side. If that's straight, well, it's fairly straight. All right, and then this one, let me just take a look first, see how that'll look. So I'll want to get it in about there, and it would look Kind of like that, which if I look at my photo, that placement looks pretty good. Wait, so I'm going to go ahead and I will use a little bit of E6000 glue on the wire and glue both of my wings in place. Okay, I glued in the wings. Now once you get them glued in, it, you might want to um, just stab a few times at the top just to kind of really get it attached to the body don't have to but it doesn't hurt and then you can kind of arrange the wool around the wing and with that the chick is almost done I'm going to go over mine one more time kind of do a little bit of picking out some of the fluff do final trim and cleaning up any bits of stray wool and then I'll uh, show you the final result and here's my chick and you could position the head differently. I made a second chick. I positioned the head facing the opposite way so they make a cute little pair. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It was a lot of fun to put together. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And thank you for watching.